Hi there, everybody. I'm Fred Thomas, and you are watching All Things Bike. And today we are speaking again with Laurie Boxer Maycomer, attorney at Kelly, Remmel, and Zimmerman, and also a member of the Bike Law Network. Laurie. Welcome back. Thank you. Great to be here. Well, it's good to have you back, and, and um, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got some interesting things um, that, that, um, that we've been working on over the summer, and um, a lot of it is about, um, I guess, what happens on the road between drivers and, and cyclists. And um, before we get to that, can you just remind us um, what you do um, with the Bike Law Network? Sure, sure. So as you said um, a moment ago, mm -hmm. I'm an attorney that practices here in the state of Maine. I actually practice throughout the state of Maine, mm -hmm. but I'm also part of a national and now international network of attorneys that um, actually has two approaches to um, working with bicyclists. We do a bunch of proactive stuff, things that have to do with um, advocacy mm -hmm. and policy work, um, kind of working on the ground for good policy for bicyclists. Right. And then we also um, are involved in responsive work, which is unfortunately situations where people are harassed or actually are involved in personal injury actions, traffic crashes, and the like. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, and we work together as a group. Um, we have, a, you know, a significant number of resources that we share with one another, um, bounce things off one another, and are really there to make sure that you know, the people that we work with, whether they're coalitions, nonprofit mm -hmm. organizations, um, bicycle shops, or bicyclists, get the best um, results that they can possibly get. Fascinating, and, and this is a, a nationwide network. Um, um, uh, is it is it um, has it been established for a long time, or is it something new? Yeah, I, I, it has been established for decades. Um, I think it started smaller by Peter Wilburn, who lost his mm -hmm. brother to a, a horrible bicycle crash, and then mm -hmm. what happened, I think, was that um, you know slowly people began to gravitate towards the the network. The attorneys that practice that way anyway started to gravitate towards the network, and um, then the network so it, started to grow. That's where where it is now. Right. Um, what is is there is there a definition of a, of a bicycle crash um, in the legislation or in the law or in the network? So what's interesting, I think you're kind of asking about the semantics between yeah, crash terms, or accident, accident yeah, exactly. collision or incident. Mm -hmm. um, so what's interesting is um, semantics matter. They shape how we as a society yeah. respond to things. And um, for years, people have been referring to preventable incidents or collisions or crashes as accidents. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, a couple of weeks ago when we actually had a speaker here on autonomous vehicles in the city of Portland, there was a planner from Boston who said it um, best. I hadn't heard anyone explain it better, but he said, you know, accidents are um, things that happen when you know your two-year-old doesn't make it to the toilet on time. Right. Crashes are things that are preventable. We have control over them. And a lot of times in bicycle cases, um, the the incident or the collision or the crash is referred to as an accident, and people kind of are accepting it. And um, this is probably why we have you know about forty thousand motor vehicle you know deaths a year because right. we've kind of desensitized ourselves to the whole issue, and um, yeah. that is you know a problem. So I think if you start using the right words and people start realizing that these things are preventable. Um, that also helps right. to create a culture where we don't allow it. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Or, or do something to, to um, prevent it from happening again. I mean, that's what's so painful. If it keeps happening over and over again, um, um, you know, we've got to do something. Well, um, is there, is there a, a, a crash that, that, a type of crash that you deal with frequently that, that seems to um, be the most common kind of incident? Or, I mean, is there a way to give us a sense of the kind of crashes or cases you work on? So, you know, my cases really run um, uh, everything, right? yeah, okay. <laughs> across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I, everything from cases involving dogs that have either 
attacked bicyclists or run out um, to play with a bicyclist. Right. Um, to cases where there's no contact. This is a common thing where someone may take a turn, um, often it's a left turn in front of a bicyclist, mm -hmm. um, and the bicyclist does something to avoid a crash because they don't want, they see themselves heading towards a right. crash, and so they will swerve or break or whatever it is to avoid that impact with the vehicle, yeah. and then go usually, unfortunately, flying through the air or right. Right. result, you know, have a, an injury that results. So mm -hmm. those are common, right hooks are common. Right. An unfortunate thing that's happening a lot is um, the mirrors um, and other items that are projecting off larger vehicles mm -hmm. are catching cy cyclists either shoulders or heads, um, yeah. and that I have some of those cases right. as well. Well, is uh, yeah, I mean the, the, that's um, and what you mean is when a car or a large vehicle with a big mirror it passes um, someone who's riding along, those mirrors are are long enough that they actually hit the hit the rider. Um, riders going at 20 and the, and the truck's going or the car is going at 50 and, and um, yeah. I, yeah, it's hard to know. Right. Speeds, and it might even be a slow speed, someone thinking right. that they're just going to squeak by the, right. the bicyclist at a slower speed, but they still, still catch their head. And it, it's still, um, that's still a big impact. But, well, how, how much um, of education has helped, as far as you can tell, um, with raising awareness, um, whether it's education of public service announcements or, or, um, or training? Um, at, at at the school level, um, right? Has has any of that started or um, taken hold? Well, it's different in in different states. I know here in Maine, um, the Bicycle Coalition of Maine mm -hmm. is taking steps to do things on all sorts of levels. Everything from um, we just I, I sit you're, on the board. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm on their board, but yeah. Um, yeah, we for example sat with one of um, the AARP that mm -hmm. for elderly right. citizens um, with one of their directors a couple of months ago, and we started talking about how do we work on educational campaigns directed at older drivers that may not have been updated recently on all of the new bicycle laws. Right. Um, so Bicycle Coalition of Maine's doing that type of thing, and um, we have some really stellar. Um, people that are in our education mm -hmm. uh, um, department, I, I guess you would call it our staff, yeah, right. um, and they're doing work out in the community and all, in schools um, here and then up in northern Maine as well. We now have someone based in northern Maine, which is important that sure. we're getting um, communities across the state. Yeah, yeah. No, well, that's great. Well, um, you know, um, that, that I'm sure is going to help, and, um, and we've done our own um, effort too. I mean, we, we went out into the field and we, we taped um, um, some of these incidences or, or some of these scenarios, I guess you could call them, um, to, um, I guess, show our viewers and, and the world, right. um, whoever wants to watch, what some of these things look like. And um, and and so um, we'll take a look at these videos and and you know make some observations and and um, and we'll we'll take it from there. So yeah, as they used to say, let's go to the videotape. All right, this is this is going to be uh, Doring. This is our first Doring video. I'm seeing a distracted person. That's that's Doring. I mean, a lot of people may not know what Doring is, but um, um, I saw a, a, a person who is distracted. Um, I also saw a cyclist who's riding maybe just a little bit too close to the to the parked cars. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else in there that that you know, popped out at you? Certainly, what popped out for me as an attorney versus <laughs> a layperson is, wow, that's a violation of 2068, the parking statute, because there is an explicit portion right. of the main motor vehicle and traffic um, code that mm -hmm. touches on this behavior and specifically mm -hmm. puts the burden on um, the person that's in the motor vehicle and opening their door, whether they're a passenger or a driver alike, right. to actually make sure that you're not opening your door on moving traffic. So there's actually a, an affirmative duty under our law that, that requires us to be careful about that. And then um, the other interesting thing that most people don't know about sure. is there's a, another subsection that basically says once you open that door, you shouldn't leave it open um, longer than necessary or in any yeah. way that could, you know, yeah, cause yeah, yeah, someone yeah. Um, to be harmed. Let's, so yeah, no. Let's take another quick look at that that video, and um, and there's there's a detail in there that that I always notice, or that I see happening in real life all the time. Okay, 
cyclist. We're all distracted at some point of the day. That door goes all the way open. And um, I've seen that, you know, many times people um, open the door and, and, and then and then it stays open, or, or they open it all the way when, you know, you don't really need to open it all, um, all the way. Um, that's not permitted under the law. You're not supposed to open your door on moving traffic. Moving traffic. And the nice thing about Maine Law, and again, thanks to the coalition, is we to make sure that there was no ambiguity in the mm -hmm. definition of traffic. So when the, the law says you shouldn't open your door on moving traffic, right. there's um, the definition of traffic includes bicyclists. So right. um, it's not that you can't just open your door on another car. Right, um, right. It's that you can't open your door on any type of moving it, traffic, whether it's... Um, a guy on a skateboard or... or exactly. Or, uh, yeah, I know. Well, note to self, and I'll try and do it myself, which is I'm going to open the door, check, and, um, and uh, don't open it all the way and, and just be aware. Right. Well, um, let's um, just take a quick look at, at um, a video we did about how to avoid dooring. Um, right. It's pretty straightforward. Sure. Let's go to the videotape. There you go. So that was the Dutch Reach. And um, explain the Dutch Reach a little bit for us. Sure. So there are certain things that bicyclists can do to keep themselves safe, and I think we're going to get to that in a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there are certain things that every person that drives a motor vehicle can do or, or is a passenger in a motor vehicle can do to keep people on the outside of that vehicle safe. Mm -hmm. The Dutch reach is a concept whereby a person, rather than opening their car door with the hand closest to the car door, they use the other hand yeah. and they reach over, which causes them to look back and behind yeah, yeah. their shoulder, which is just, it just happens naturally. Yeah. And it also so causes them um, to open a door more slowly That's than true. they yeah, otherwise yeah. would do it, and maybe not as fully extended as they otherwise yeah, might yeah, do. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're doing multiple things by using this approach of turning and opening that keeps people on the outside safe, because even though you're going to show a video in a little while um, of a bicyclist that is able to avoid dooring, sometimes in you know urban centers, there's traffic all around and someone's not going to let you move That's out right. and take the travel lane and you're kind of squeezed into an area where you might not be able to avoid a car door even, you know, yeah. even if you try to take the lane. Um, mm -hmm. And I know the cycling savvy folks would say, say you should take it from yeah. the beginning, but sometimes these things sometimes happen unexpectedly. Yeah. Yeah. So the Dutch reach is a way for the driver to actually fulfill their statutory obligation to right. keep people safe outside. Yeah. And it's super easy. And... Um, I, it, yeah. it can be done. I mean, is it is it part of the um, the the the, a, the AAA um, driver's education uh, program yet, or or is there an initiative to um, make it part of the? Um, driver's education? I'm not sure if it is, but... but um. So the Bicycle Coalition of Maine has actually started talking to the folks that put together the driver's ed training regulations right. and materials um, about getting this type of method into our teaching materials. Um, Massachusetts actually um, is ahead of the game. They actually did, um, I think in the last year or two, get it incorporated into mm -hmm. their um, driver's ed manual. And so did um, Illinois. So those two so, states yeah, yeah. are kind of um, yeah. taking the lead nationally yeah. with making sure that we teach this best best practice. Yeah. You know, so if nothing more, people should just be introduced to it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take another a quick look at it, and um, and uh, I imagine it's called the Dutch Reach because it it originated in Holland, where bikes are everywhere. You got it. Here we go. Um, riding along. Okay. Is our enlightened driver. He's not too busy. Yeah, all right, so disaster averted. Um, brilliant, well, I mean, it's, it, yeah, I think I have to train myself a little bit on that one, um, but again, the more people hear about it, I'm sure the, you know, it, will, it will begin to um, sink in. Um, what about the, the, the right hook? Explain that a little bit and before we go and take a look at it. Right. So that is, you were asking about common cases. Right mm -hmm. hooks are very, unfortunately, very common here in Maine as well as across the country. In the world, too, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Right. Although, you know, parts of the world where people are 
you know, mostly on two-wheeled vehicles, like either whether it's motor scooters, motorcycles, yeah. cycles, bikes. Like I was in um, Medellin, Colombia, and oh, most yeah. of the traffic on the road is two-wheeled traffic. So the four-wheeled traffic is actually always looking over the shoulder for huh. bicyclists, and it's more ingrained in their brains. Yeah. But um, here, um, a right hook is a situation where a bicyclist is often proceeding straight, whether it's through an intersection or on a roadway, and um, a driver takes a right-hand turn unsafely in mm -hmm. front of the bicyclist, and the bicyclist is um, either unable to stop and collides with the vehicle or tries to avoid a collision uh, like mm -hmm. we talked about right. before, and there may be a no-contact crash, but right. certainly caused by the vehicle that made a decision to make that turn when it was unsafe to do so. What I saw was, was um, um, you know, the driver is coming down uh, and, and pretty fast, um, and, and uh, even though the directionals are on, um, he, he still seems um, ready to accelerate or, or get past the, the, the bicycle, uh, get past the rider, and, and make, make that turn. Is, is, the, is the right hook, is that, is that, um, is that uh, in, the, in the law, or is, it, is, it, is that manifesting it, itself some way in the, in, the, in the laws right now? It, it, there definitely is a provision for it in the law, um, but first, before I forget, I just want to quickly touch on yeah. what you mentioned um, with respect to the directional. Okay. So you could put a directional on and still cause right. um, someone to crash with an unsafe turn. So yeah. I mean, think that often drivers will say, well, I had my blinker on, um, and often it really doesn't matter whether they did or didn't. I mean, yeah. um, if they decide to make it a turn at a time when it's unsafe to do so and doesn't give that bicyclist sufficient warning and time to, cr uh, to avoid a crash, then mm. that that doesn't get them yeah, out of it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. It's not a, a protective shield or anything. Right, but you know, um, there is you know on that point, uh, you're supposed to give a hundred um, feet of a warning to whether it's a bicyclist or another car. So that directional should be on um, and mm. alerting anyone on the roadway to your upcoming right. turn for a hundred feet. So. That's just a good pointer for drivers and bicyclists alike. And same thing with a bicyclist making their turn. Um, you should be signaling for that 100 feet yeah, right. before your turn. But going back to the law on right hooks, there is a provision in the law that was specifically put in there to protect bicyclists against mm -hmm. these types of unsafe turns mm -hmm. and it basically says you should not turn into the path of travel of a bicyclist at a time yeah. when it's unsafe to do so. so it's going to depend on you know speed. Some let's say there's a bicyclist traveling at 25 miles an hour. You have to give them sufficient time to perceive, which is a couple of seconds, react, yeah, right, um, break, and everything. So it's not just um, well, I had it on for X amount of time. You have to think about okay, the speed limit on this road is 45. This right. bicyclist may be going 30. 35 yeah, yeah, if they're going downhill faster. It becomes more complicated when you're trying to judge speeds and corners and all that. Well, let's take a quick look at that again. Yeah, um, this is downhill. This car is going pretty quick. Um, but the bicyclist is going relatively slow and takes steps to avoid it, fortunately. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it could have been could, uh, yeah. a really horrible situation. Yeah, yeah. 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 and it, is, it, it does happen a lot. Um, um, yeah, and it's and it can be pretty alarming. And um, let's take a quick look at, um, at uh, how to avoid uh, a right hook because right. Um, that helps um, put things in perspective. Same thing. It looks like the temptation to pass is there. All right. I mean, the first thing that pops into my head there is is somehow the driver realizes that that um, there's no rush. Right. Um, but that I mean, you know, elaborate on that. Is there is there um, is there an initiative to get people to just calm down and and not not rush so much when they when they're dealing with cyclists? Right. Yeah, I think people often just need to breathe and realize, you know, okay, yeah, this is going to take me three seconds longer than I thought it was to get down this road. Um, sometimes it may be as much as 15 or 30 seconds that they have to wait for a bicyclist. But um, the reality I wish I could just impress this upon the world is right. that 
you know, even just getting a ticket will take you an hour. <laughs> yeah. um, but if you harm someone, it's going to cause all sorts of right. um, time to be spent on right. the aftermath. And so really um, to the extent that drivers can slow down a tad and wait for an appropriate time, that's the best thing to do. And likewise, bicyclists too yeah. need to make decisions about what best to do and how to be respectful of other people too. Yeah. Um, but the reality is, is, you know, people on bikes are more vulnerable. Um, and so we really need to think about that. And just because someone's in a motor vehicle doesn't mean they, yeah. they their rights eclipse those of um, other users. Do you have any any personal rules of thumb? Um, I mean, my personal rule of thumb is, is is to wave at the driver if there's a circumstance when, the, when I see the driver and 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 we're approaching a, 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 an intersection. I look at the at the car. I wave. Um, uh, you know, that's that's one thing that pops to mind. Um, are there any other tips out there that that you can think of or right. that are coming out of the coalition? Well, out of the coalition may be different than out of my, um, but but a lot of it there. But for a lot my, of the tips are overlap. Yeah, commuter, I think. Say. Yeah, commuters and um, yeah, I think that a lot of us would say the communication is key. Everyone communicating with one another, whether it's using hands, whether it's making eye contact. Um, like in a situation like that, the bicyclist can decide to take the lane. That looked like, you know, a situation where if they decided to either take the lane to establish control over it um, in front of the car or behind the car and kind of, you know, use their hand to tell mm -hmm. the car, car to slow down for a second and let, you know, them yeah. proceed if they were aware that the car wanted to turn. Or if they saw the cars turning, like on my way into work this morning, um, as I was approaching Marginal Way, mm -hmm. um, I saw that the car in front of me had a blinker on, so I decided to let the car behind me know I'm going to take the lane now. So I, you know, signaled right. to the left to show them I was coming out into the travel lane from the bike lane. Right. And then I was just going to situate myself right, right there in the intersection. Yeah. Well, and, and um, yeah, no one likes surprises, so it sounds like the the, the indication um, was was the the right way to go. Um, um, excellent. Well, let's see. Um, the, the next tape we did is safe passing um, and um, safe passing of a group of cyclists. Let's take a look at that videotape. Right, so we have the, the car directional on there. Yeah, a little bit of a rough road, but um, right. um, what, did, what did you see? What pops to your mind there? So the first thing I see is the 25 mile an hour posted speed limit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what speed those bicyclists are going, but they did look like they were going relatively fast. And if they are traveling um, at or near the posted speed limit, one might even say, what's that driver doing passing anyway at that point in time? So that's my first reaction okay, is yeah, yeah. that a lot of times drivers actually don't need to pass. They think they see a bicyclist, they think the bicyclist is going slower or whatever. But if that posted speed limit was 25, it's there for a reason. Um, oh, sure. And plus that driver's passing a group of what it looked like to be you know, 15 riders or so. Yeah, at least. Um, so they also have a speed obligation under a different portion of the traffic code to be aware of all that, all of those vulnerable users, and maybe even travel even slower than than um, right. need be. But let's say that um, you know they still decided to pass, and let's say that the speed limit was 45 in that area. Yeah. Um, they do have, you know, there is a statute that allows them to pass even on a double yellow. Although there are some officers that say that's only in the case of an emergency, but the legislative history of the statute suggests otherwise. It suggests that yes, you can pass in a no passing zone when it's safe to right. do so. Right, right. Well, let's let's take another yeah. quick look at that one, and see what pops in. I didn't I didn't notice this, the the speed limit sign. Yeah, it says reduce there, speed ahead. And there and it is. Yeah. It is 25, yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, and what about the car going all the way into the left lane? Um, I mean, you can tell the driver is a cyclist. 
Um, because <laughs> Although it's passing on a curve, so even though the driver's going <laughs> only human. So I know, but would I recommend yeah. passing on a curve? No. Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. So so the rule, the, definitely the rule. I mean, primary rule if, is to you know make sure you've got a straightaway. You can see what's coming through when. Yeah. And um and and don't get going too too quickly. Right. Um, um, but yes, you can tell the drivers the cyclist and was giving them plenty of space. But at the same time, you do have to worry about you can oncoming traffic yeah, exactly. because that can create a crisis. You can, you can give too much space because there might have been someone pulling out of their driveway on the left side of the road, right? Who is absolutely not expecting a um, a, a car in the in the other lane, or but, another group of fifteen cyclists around that curve. Yeah, exactly. I mean, truly, yeah. um, that's happened before. I'm sure it's happened to you as well, where you're. Um, riding along and someone's doing a good deed by passing one group of cyclists yes, right. and then you're in another group on the other side of the road. Bottle, like, yeah. Is there a word for that or a circumstance for that? I, or, I, I, no, maybe we need to think yeah, about think that and come back. It'll be, you know, <laughs> on your next, uh, next uh, Ab show we'll, we'll No, abs absolutely. Well, no, it, that. It, it is, uh, it, no, it, it's a, a lot of people have mentioned it and, um, and I guess it just comes back to the fact we all have to be, just have to pay attention so much now. Um, when we're riding, even if we're riding the route that we always ride, and um, because there's just there's just more cars on the road, um, there, there might be more distracted drivers. Um, um, I don't know. Um, uh, let's take a look at uh, passing a single rider because um, it, it, we want to see if there's a difference between passing an individual rider or a group. Right. There you go. Right. What are you, what are you seeing there? So, um, in general, you know, as you know, bicyclists have the right to ride in the safest position mm -hmm. that they think um, is appropriate for the circumstances. So, in general, there's a statute that does say <coughs> ride as far right as practicable. Yeah. But then there are. Um, situations where that statute doesn't apply and then a bunch of exceptions to the statute. Um, mm -hmm. So here, um, you, you look at the roadway and, um, and there may have been on the edge of the roadway uh, uh, a drop off on the pavement or mm -hmm. items or on just rough, yeah, rough right. road. So this cyclist may have been deciding to ride a little bit further left um, to let drivers know that mm -hmm. he or she was there. Um, also because it's a curvy road at that point, so they may have taken um, a further position in the lane also to promote visibility. Yeah. Um, and then may have just been worried about what may or may not have been on the road, you know, the day before or whatever, and sure, thought, yeah. I'm going to stay. This is the practicable notion, right? Right. Um, and, and, and um, right, so, so the, 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 the car is, is all the way in the, in the left, left left lane, but but um, it seems to work out in, in the circumstances, right? I mean, the, the, the driver shouldn't feel wronged. Right. And, it, and it, you know, what's fascinating, and you hear this from group riders, is that they do care. A lot of them are drivers themselves. And so oh, yeah. this rider, like, was very respectful in that when it was appropriate, when he realized what was going on, he, and when he realized it was a good time to move back to the far right, he was starting to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of bicyclists do that. And they're not intending to be um, rude or disrespectful of drivers. A lot of times they're doing it so that there's no last minute swerve into yeah. the car or something Surprises, like that. They're just yeah. trying to be sl steady, you yeah. know, and, and intentional in their positioning. Wow, well, excellent. Well, um, um, is there any, any more observations about those videotapes? Uh, I mean, is there one of them that, that, um, that you see frequently? Or one, I mean, you, you said dooring and, and, or right hook was the most common um, event. Um, have any other insights or observations about um, any of these videos or any of the Well, so topics? I know with group riding, it's always a perennial issue for the coalition. And mm -hmm. even now, you know, I get calls too saying, what are all these riders doing in the road? And I think, mm -hmm. again, um, what's important is to have conversation and dialogue and hopefully some more PSAs and things like this where mm -hmm. drivers get a feel for why people are doing what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes the roads look much worse. This, I think these are Cape Elizabeth roads that are in pretty decent yeah, condition. Scarborough, too, Scarborough, yeah. Scarborough, yeah. 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 But there are portions of our roadways that are full of potholes and things like that, and where, you know, the riders are taking up the road for a reason because they're, you know, yeah. realizing it's too unpredictable for a car to pass several cyclists, and so they're 
holding their ground in the travel lane. And I think drivers yes. look at that as, wow, they're thinking that they rule the road. So, yeah, right. But what they're trying to do is say, let's just all stay safe for a couple of seconds and then we'll get back to where we all yeah. um, are able to get on our ways when, when the time's ready. When yeah, yeah, when, when we'll get back into our, our travel routine. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, um, it's so easy um, to, to sort of you know, observe it you know, after the fact, but um, I think if we keep talking about it, it, and it will, it'll, it'll sink in and it'll, it'll, um, the message will, will get out there. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's great, Lori. Well, um, uh, thanks so much for, for looking at those videos and, yeah. and helping us make those videos. I mean, yeah, you are the writer in, in that. And, um, and thanks for coming down again. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. It's a pleasure. Thanks. All right, everybody, that was Lori Boxer Maycomer, attorney at Kelly Remmel and Zimmerman, and also a member of the Bike Law Network. You can learn more about the Bike Law Network on their Facebook page and on the internet. That's all we got time for right now. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. All Things Bike is brought to you by Fitworks, Rider First Bike Fitting, Rider Matched Bike Sales. Locations in Peabody, Massachusetts, Waitsfield, Vermont, and Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. And Frame and Wheel, eBay selling services for cyclists, bike shops, and bicycle companies. Time, space, cash, pick three. And AD Bikes, the modern face of Ostro Daimler Cycling and the bike company of the future.